In this video, we're going to start looking through the lighting window in Unity, and we're going to look at some of the various global illumination settings that we have. And we're going to start looking at these at a very high level, just going to look at sort of where things live and some of the things that you can do, and then we'll dive in a bit deeper in later videos. And if you don't have this lighting window open, you can open it under Window, Lighting, Settings. And I like to just dock it next to my inspector. So once you open up the lighting window, first thing you're going to see at the top is that we have three different settings. Uh, I'm sorry, three different tabs. And the first tab is going to be our scene settings. So this is going to be something that applies to our scene in Unity as a whole. We're also going to have this Global Maps tab. And the global maps is where we can view information on the baked lighting. We can view information on light maps and things. The third tab is object maps. And object maps allows us to take a look at a particular object and see how it contributes to the lighting system. And we'll revisit those in just a moment. So to start, we're going to take a look at um, one of our roughly half dozen sections, the environment section. So the environment section defines parameters that are going to be applied to objects in the scene from the environment. So for instance, um, this first section is all about the skybox. And by default, when you put objects into your scene and they have some reflectivity, so they are metallic objects, they're going to reflect the skybox. So we need to know what it is that they're reflecting. Next thing that we have is environment lighting. And environment lighting uh, essentially defines where our ambient light in the scene is coming from. So in this case, our skybox is generating the ambient light that actually lights our objects. And this third section, environment reflections, uh, gives us a little bit of detail on sort of the defaults for reflections that again are going to be applied to objects that are somewhat reflective. So things like metallic objects, very smooth objects. The next section, real-time lighting, of course, deals with the real-time lights. That is to say, lights that are not static, lights that move, but also objects that move and need to respond to lighting in a dynamic way. And we're going to have real-time and our static or our baked lights, which are going to be under this light mapping settings. And then our mixed options tells us how we combine these two things to produce our overall lighting. So taking a look at the real-time lighting, um, right now, in Unity 5.6, this is a pretty straightforward section. We either turn it on or we turn it off. And this seems pretty simple, but looks can be deceiving. Um, this actually requires a little bit of explanation for what's going on. So real-time lighting, again, is for our lights that are going to be moving or for objects that are going to be moving to where we have dynamic lighting, lighting that is changing frame to frame. But in Unity, what they've done is they've said that we can pre-calculate lights in terms of these light mapping settings, but that it will also, from frame to frame, try to update those as the lights move. And so even as we're writing, even as we're rendering things in real time and we're lighting things from frame to frame, it's going to be running a little bit in the background um, and it's going to be caching some information that makes our lights look a little bit better. So when we say real-time lighting, we actually have the frame-to-frame real-time lighting. But then, and you can see this if you hover over this, we also have indirect light. So direct light is light that comes directly from our light source and touches an object and lights that face of the object. And indirect light is light that, for instance, hits an object, bounces off, and lights the other objects around it. So for this checkbox, essentially what we're saying is we're always going to have real-time lighting, but we can have real-time lighting contribute to our cached and our calculated global illumination. Essentially, we can be updating things frame to frame, um, or we can simply, if we turn this off, then we are simply running the direct lighting for frame to frame. And you can actually see that there is a difference, that we have some light that's bouncing off of objects and is making our um, little pillar look a little bit brighter. Next up, we're going to take a look at the baked lighting. And baked lighting in Unity is done with Enlighten. And Enlighten is actually a whole third-party program um, which Unity has integrated into their engine. And Enlighten is designed to do global illumination. 
So it does all of our complex math to figure out um, how light photons are emitted from various lights and bounce around between the various objects of the scene and eventually contribute to our overall lighting, which is then baked into maps, hence the term light mapping. So I won't get too much in detail in these particular parameters, but essentially what we're doing is we're deciding how objects in our scene that are marked as static, that are unmoving and are going to be baked, get turned into lights that we can view under our global maps. And we have a few different resolution settings and things. Um, one thing that I do want to mention is some of these actually give us more options. So for instance, ambient occlusion. When ambient occlusion is turned on, um, there's, there's quite a bit that can be done there to add AO to your scene. And I took a few moments to actually apply some reasonable AO and general light mapping settings and bake the illumination into the scene. And we can see some of these effects now in the scene. So for instance, in this shadow of our pillar, we can see a combination of ambient occlusion near the base where we have that sort of fade to darker. And we can also see indirect lighting where our light is hitting our bright surface, reflecting onto our tower and actually brightening up our tower even in the shadowed part. So we can see that these settings allow us to create some actually quite beautiful things if we know what we're doing in Unity. So from the light mapping settings, we only have two more sections. And the first one is other settings. And this is a bit of a grab bag. Um, this is mostly for um, lighting effects, visual effects. So for instance, the fog setting allows us to apply fog as a color at a distance. Um, halos and flares and spot cookies apply to lights in our scene. And last but not least, we have the debug settings. And the debug settings as of Unity 5.6 only includes information on light probe visualization and light probes are covered in more depth in another section. So that covers our major settings for our lighting window for global illumination in Unity. And again, we have some general environment settings that describe how objects are lit by the environment. We have a section specifically for real-time lighting. We have a section um, for light mapping. We have a section for other, which is sort of visual effects. And then we have a debug section. And I did actually miss one, so I'll finish with mixed lighting. And mixed lighting is how we are going to combine our light mapping with our real-time lighting. And most of that is through this lighting mode. And this lighting mode defines uh, essentially how we add not only the lights, but also how we add the shadows between objects that are real-time illuminated and objects that are baked. And for shadows, uh, typically we're going to calculate shadows in real time, sort of closer to the user, and then we're going to fade to um, baked shadow masks, baked shadows uh, in the distance. And there's a whole lot more on all of these different modes in um, videos that Unity has released and also on the Unity website um, in the various references and manuals. So I won't go into those there. Now, before I sign off, I do want to cover a couple more things. And that's these other tabs available to us in the lighting window. And these include our maps. So now that I've actually generated some lighting, I've actually created some maps and we can take a look at these. And I'm going to start with the global maps. And the global maps contain the data that has been baked for our objects. And they actually contain um, a bunch of different information. So I'm gonna pull this down so we can see. Um, they contain not only sort of the intensity of the light, but information on where the light is coming from. And this directionality information, which is turned on with directional light maps, um, is useful for us for things like uh, specular and reflective materials. Because when you look at a shiny, a specular or reflective material, the angle that you're looking at it depend or the angle that you're looking at it relative to where the lights are coming from really makes a big difference on how that object looks. And this is just sort of an overall preview of our light maps. We can look more in depth into our light maps by looking at our object maps. And what our object maps do is they show us the maps for a particular object. So we actually need to have an object selected in the scene. And right now it's telling us it's highlighting which global maps it appears on. But if we open up the object maps, 
we can start to get information on this particular object. And to start, it doesn't look very interesting, but what we have is a dropdown, and we can actually look at all kinds of information that's been baked on this object. And so we saw in the global maps, for instance, the baked intensity. And so this actually shows us for our cube, for our six faces of the cube, here's the lighting information that has actually been baked into that ob object. And not only do we get the baked in intensity, but as we saw before, we get the baked direction. And we can see which parts of that apply to this object. And then we have all kinds of information um, on shadows, which we don't have here, um, on real-time intensity, because again, we do some caching of real-time, um, especially for like indirect lights and things like that, and so on and so forth. And yeah, we can go through and we can look at object maps for all kinds of objects in our scene, and that will show us where those then appear on the various light maps. And it'll actually show us the information that we have baked. So we can use this to verify that light mapping has gone according to plan. And if you're new to light mapping, you can actually learn use this to learn a little bit about how light mapping works and what light mapping does. So with all that being said, we've really explored pretty much everything that you can do in this lighting window, except of course, actually generate your lighting. And this is where we are going to kick off our lighting process that produces our light maps. And just a quick thing of note here, because this is a little bit tricky, by default, um, when you're running Unity, when you open a new project, auto-generate will be turned on. And what auto-generate will do is it will constantly generate previews of your light mapping even as you move objects around. So it's just going to always be running in the background calculating light mapping. And if I take one of my objects and I move it, then it's going to immediately start working on an update and just kind of run continuously, run continuously. However, this is a tricky thing. Auto-generate only creates preview light maps. So what that means is it's not actually baking data that will appear in your compiled game. If you want to actually create lighting data, which you can see here, you have to turn this off and you have to go to manual generation, kick off your light mapping, and that will then actually generate these various light maps, which we saw previously, as well as reflection probe and light probe and all kinds of other information for your scene. And that's about it for this lighting window. Now, before we sign off on this video, one more thing that I want to show you is that a lot of this same information that we can see in here and even more information that helps us with lighting can be seen directly in the scene. And you can do that through this drop down for essentially our draw mode inside of the scene. And by default, we're drawing a regular shaded view. You know, we can also look at a wireframe of the objects in the scene. But what we're interested in is all this stuff down here. And we can see all kinds of information about the light mapping directly applied to the objects in the scene. So for instance, if I'm curious how something is going to be baked into the light map, essentially um, what the size is of the object as it appears on the light map, I can click on this. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. This actually gives me um, the baked light map value. So the same thing that we saw in our object maps, if we were to click on these objects uh, and take a look at their baked intensity. Um, what I meant to show you there was the UV charts. And the UV charts show us information on how this object is actually uh, essentially being sort of sized based on the um, amount of detail that we have in the lights, the size of the object, and all kinds of other information. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of cool stuff that can be found in this section, and I certainly encourage you to poke through and to take a look at this various information and learn more through trial and error about how light mapping in Unity works.